right, so we finally got some snow here. Um, we got about, I think it's five inches. I'll get the tape measure out and measure it, but I got Yarbo right here and it is ready to go. I intentionally did not run it all day, even though it has been snowing all day. Really, you want to probably run it every two or three inches of depth of snow, which is pretty easy. It started snowing overnight. It's all the way in the uh, afternoon here, but I wanted to um, get it running in the daylight so you could see it in the full action. The benefit of having it autonomous is, like I said, you can run it after two or three inches and it's going to just always keep up with the snow. Even if it snows three feet, uh, it never does that in one hour. It's going to typically uh, snow a couple inches an hour at best. So uh, what I have set up is I have a walkway, I have a circle driveway, and then I actually have to go around the side of the house uh, to the garage approach or in front of the garage as well. And then I actually have like 20,000 square feet of driveway that I clear. So the rest of that, I actually use a big snow plow. But this is all the intricate work that's kind of harder for me to plow with my Bobcat. And uh, right here is the Yarbo machine. Now it's been sitting on its uh, charging station. So it actually has a um, wireless charging pad that it sits on and stays charged. If you notice, even the lights and cameras stay on the side, they're actually heated. And that's why that is liquid water there and not snow is because they stay heated. So they do a lot of things to keep it uh, so it doesn't uh, get affected by the cold. All right, so I won't go into all the details of how I mapped it. I'll have a separate video for that. For this one, I'm gonna get footage of it running here um, in the snow. I guess I'll go ahead and get you that measurement of how deep the snow actually is today. All right, so if we look here, it looks like it's about five inches of snow. And now it's about 31 degrees. So this is a fairly wet snow and heavy snow. Uh, so this will be a good test to see how it does uh, running out there. All right, so I have my phone app right here, and you can see I have it all the way charged. Um, I have a couple of different work plans. I can switch over here to the map. This will kind of give you a high-level view of what I have. I have lots of different work plans that I can set up, but for this one, I'm going to do all of them. So let me, um, I have all of the house, and I can just hit play on this um, app here, and it says, yep, yeah, we'll go ahead and start. And this will kick it off. Now you can see here that it has about 2,000 square feet and it says it's going to take 52 minutes to complete those 2,000 square feet. So now we can see on the app, I can actually zoom in on it and I can see the lines that it ran. So now it's finishing up right now the uh, front walkway. And then you can see the lines on the main circle driveway there that it's gonna follow where it kind of does circles around it. So now that's about what it's gonna start. So now you can see that I have uh, a car has been driving across here, but it's going to drive over those tracks and it still does a good job of actually clearing down. Now I do have the snowshoes on the, uh, the plow actually, so it doesn't go all the way down to the, um, the concrete, but you can take those shoes off and it'll actually will scrape 
all the way, all the way down to the concrete as well. So here is the garage now, a uh, couple caveats. I intentionally did not put it all the way up against the, the garage door. Um, it could obviously get closer, but I would say you're gonna have to shovel still right along a building, but this is worse than I would say it could be. Uh, I need to probably modify my plan to make it closer. But these snow piles in the middle, you know, this is really because I waited longer to run it. This is why it's better to do either uh, a couple different things. One is run it after every two or three inches. And then another one is uh, I have a six inch overlap versus a 12 inch overlap. So that means I have um, more spillage that happens on the side than you could. And then also this is the wet sticky snow, so it doesn't do as well. So, you know, I, will, I do have to say here where my wife drove out, you know, and packed down the snow, it did create a little hump there. So I do have some snow left over. So what I'm gonna do, for this one is actually I'm gonna do a double clean. Well, after I do all of it, I'm gonna go inside, but I'm gonna tell it to go run it again and it will clean all this up so that um, it's cleaned up. I'll, I'll show that at the end as well. But now I'm gonna send it uh, to go back and it's gonna do uh, half of the circle driveway to clear that up for me. <laughs> going back to the charging station now that it's all done this is a look at what it did now you can see it did miss a couple spots here and there now I only did one pass um, and the battery is um, like 19% so it is doesn't need to go back and recharge after doing all that circle and then you know I did get my snow plow out to clear actually the other part of the driveway while it was working um, so you know what I probably need to do is send it to go one more time to clear up a little bit more here some of this is actually my snow plow creating a problem there but um that's what it did that is it over there and it just cleared off the charging pad now it's turning around and it's going to um charge itself back up automatically which is kind of cool so you know it could not do two passes at uh, one battery charge but it's going to recharge right now and then i can send it back out and this is what i was talking about that really you should um, send it out more often, you know, after uh, two or three inches. That's going to give you the best clean, kind of like a Roomba where it's just like always running, um, at least during a storm. But so I do have some places here where it has a couple piles. Now I also have the overlap set at six inches instead of 12 inches. And that obviously makes it more efficient. It runs uh, quicker, but it makes it more likely that you're gonna get some of these overruns, especially if you wait uh, for that, uh, you know, five or six inches, especially with wet snow. 
you're gonna have more problems out of it. So really you could say I ran it incorrectly. I should have either had uh, less overlap if I was gonna let it um, only do the deeper snow or I could have um, done a double clean pass um, to clean it all up. But you can see um, overall, it definitely gets the job done. Could I have done it better manually? Yes. Um, and I could have done it faster manually, but um, it is able to get the job done and it's kind of a different mindset that you have to have where you just let it go. And even if it's kind of like not an efficient route or something like that, you just suck it up and, and let it do its thing because ultimately all you care about is that the snow is cleared off the driveway. Um, there are a couple times I had to go out and actually um, unclog the chute because this really wet sticky snow i mean it clogs up my my regular gas snow blower as well but it did clog up this one and that made me had to go out and clear that off manually uh, a couple times and again this is uh, a much um, warmer snow it's about 30 to 32 degrees um, this afternoon now it's starting to cool down a little bit but more snow's coming so i'm gonna send it back out again um, once the snow clears and it'll get it spotless um, on the second round or if I were to run it uh, every um, two or three inches of snow so and then remember this can do a lot more than just snow blowing because it has different modules you can put on it for um, cutting the grass leaf blowing and then there's future ones that they're gonna come out with as well uh, to add to it so with that in mind I think it's really cool technology I think it has a lot of potential I think they still have some bugs to work out with it and there's some flexibility that you have to know about when you're going to get this unit you got to do some programming you got to maybe mess with the settings if you want to see more how I actually mapped this um, this area out and the things I've learned about mapping check out another video I'll put a link in uh, the description down below with a playlist and we'll have lots of videos with this Yarbo machine all right, so now it's the next morning. Now it did snow a little bit more last night after I filmed. And so I did send it out again to clean up and it does a really good job of cleaning it up like on a second pass for sure. Or if it's um, a less snow. So, you know, there's only probably like an inch or less of snow that um, came down. And not only did it clean that up, but it also smoothed out all the rest of the snow or any places that it had missed when there's five plus inches. So you can see it does a much better job. Now I also, um, did set it up so that it did every um, or had 12 inches of overlap which is probably better for me to do so that also helped it uh, clean up some more here but we can look here all this stuff here is where it does not go on the path you can see where its path uh, stops but so that's how much snow was uh, down before and it's starting to melt now because the sun's coming up it's it's kind of late morning and you can see where it has a clearing it's already gonna melt and it's gonna get cleaned up very quickly uh, tonight. Now I do have the shoes on the snow blowers. Otherwise it actually does scrape down uh, closer to the ground, but I put the shoes on it because I have some places where the concrete, you know, has a lip on it or the cobblestones here where it's at has uh, bumps on it. And so I find if I don't have the shoes, it can catch more. And then it doesn't, it'll, it might get stuck temporarily, but it does do a thing where it backs up, lifts up the snow blower and then goes forward and lowers it back down. So it has ways to get unstuck, but it makes it slow down. So I put the shoes on there uh, to give myself a little bit of leeway. But you can see here, um, you know, it does uh, do a great job. It's already starting to, to melt uh, completely away in the sunlight today. And you can see down here at the end, again, this is where, you know, it's path that I defined uh, stops. And uh, that's how much snow, you know, like I said, it was about, about an inch or so last night. And then it's, it's all starting to melt away now here today. So overall, it does work. You know, it has some nuances, like I said before. It's a little bit of a, um, you know, emerging technology. So there are some, some hiccups there. But if you can get past those and if you're not too worried about uh, is it doing the most efficient uh, pathway or whatnot, then it actually does work and it's pretty cool. But it does do a lot better in non-wet snow. And if you keep it running after every two or three inches versus waiting uh, for the storm to end. So those are my big takeaways for it. If you do that, then it's actually a, a pretty cool uh, machine.